In 2013, Carte Blanche exposed Cape Town doctor Anil Anirudra. Registered only as a GP, he was misrepresenting himself as a gynecologist. He allegedly misdiagnosed conditions, misread ultrasounds, and a hidden camera caught him making sexual innuendos while examining a patient. Have you ever had a Indian guy? No. <laughs> he was facing 319 counts of medical aid fraud and had been arrested by the Hawks. He'd been convicted of fraud in 1992 and suspended from the South African Medical Register three times. After working in the UK for a few years, Dr. Anirudra was found guilty of serious professional misconduct in 2006 and struck off the register. But in 2007, the HPCSA allowed him to re-register in South Africa on probation. But are you a gynecologist? I'm not registered this one at the moment. Why does it say gynecologist on your door? Eventually, he beat a hasty retreat. After our broadcast, the HPCSA took action against him in 2014. According to the current acting registrar, Dr. Munyadzewa Gwinda. He was found guilty of unprofessional conduct based on those charges. Practicing as a gynecologist, and uh, they imposed a penalty of a fine of 15,000. The four charges were provisionally withdrawn in 2014. But Bonita's medical aid confirms the criminal investigation is ongoing. Dr. Anirudra then legally changed his name to Anil Ramdin and started practicing as a GP in Kailicha. In 2009, Medunsa had failed his MMED dissertation in gynecology, but he took them to court. Ten years later, the Pretoria High Court ordered the university to award the MMED degree. And in 2019, he officially registered as a gynecologist. But the problems continue. And now I'm weak, you know. I just walk a little distance and end up having short breaths. We found 48-year-old Nandi at home in Kailicha, too weak to get out of bed. This award-winning actress and director from Cape Town's Baxter Theatre asked us not to use her real name. In April, I had to see the doctor because I, I was feeling some pain, abnormal pain. So I went to Dr. Ramdin. The doctor suspected that I've got uh, fibroids. This is the Kailicha Medical Center, where Dr. Ramdin calls himself the chief medical officer. It's privately owned, and from the outside, it looks perfectly legitimate. And that is why Nandi chose this as her first port of call, even though as a medical aid patient, she could have gone anywhere. Dr. Ramdin booked her into a small operating theater a few kilometers away, where he performed a laparoscopy. He diagnosed cervical cancer. Did you say you must see an oncologist or suggest anything else? Didn't suggest anything else other than scaring me and saying that cancer is going to eat me out. In most cases, what you would do is you would call a gynecological oncologist to guide you and help you with a staging of this. And this is certainly not something that would fall within the scope of practice of a general gynecologist to, to treat on its own. Dr. Johannes van Vaart is the ex officio president of SASOC, the South African Society for Obstetricians and Gynecologists. We asked him what the prognosis for stage two cervical cancer would be. If it is properly treated in a grade two cervical cancer, I think the prognosis is excellent. And, and I think the chance of that patient living to the end of their life is very, very good. Instead, Dr. Ramdin recommended a total hysterectomy and booked Nandi into the Rondebosch Medical Center where he also has rooms. On the 18th of May, she had an MRI scan, which revealed a large mass on her cervix. We showed the MRI report to retired gynecologist Dr. Carol Nell, who now lectures student doctors at UCT. The report mentions that there is a growth on the cervix measuring 55 millimetres, which is a very important finding because um, a tumour larger than 4 centimetres would possibly mean that there's extension of this tumour elsewhere in the pelvis. So would that mean you need to operate? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You would end up cutting through the tumour rather than getting one centimetre clear margins around the tumour. So if you can't do surgery, then 
combined chemotherapy, radiotherapy is the treatment of choice. And one must remember that it's not a second best treatment. It is the treatment. But Dr. Ramdin chose to operate and Nandi had a total hysterectomy. As next of kin, she named her friend and boss, Baxter CEO, Lara Foote. This Dr. Ramdin called me the next day after the operation, said that the operation was complete and I said to him, okay, when will she be coming home? When, when do I need to collect her? And he said, no, no, um, it might be a while, it might be a week or two. I said, oh, okay. I said, did you get all the cancer out? And he said he, he wasn't sure. They might, he wasn't sure, he thinks he did. Then a couple of days later, I spoke to her on the telephone and she said um, that they'd moved her to another ward because she was smelling so bad. I heard the doctors talking, saying this is a mess. There was pulse, and the nurses were calling the doctor. Uh, and the doctor was never was nowhere to be found. A week later, Dr. Ramdin finally called in a general surgeon who performed an emergency procedure. Her wound was severely septic, with gangrene and necrosis of the skin. Nandi was in ICU for several weeks and underwent another seven procedures before she could finally be discharged. And so she stayed for months uh, in the hospital. And all this time she was supposed to be having a chemotherapy. Four months after her cancer diagnosis, Nandi eventually had chemo radiation therapy, but the cancer had already spread. The surgery is very risky. It could end up with a high risk of fistula. A fistula is a connection or a hole between the bladder and the vagina or between the rectum and the vagina, which would then lead to feces and urine draining through the vagina. This is precisely what happened to Nandi. When I went to hospital, I was on high heel. I was driving. I was, I was fresh, but when I came out of hospital, it was something that ended up to this. Besides the, uh, the trauma of all these operations, the indignity of what has now happened to her insides, which, is, which are in a shambles, she's left with very little hope because chemo is, is not working. So we came looking for Dr. Ramdin at the Ronda Bosch Medical Center, and he's not available today. And according to his receptionist, he has 12 surgeries booked for the whole day. As next of kin, Laura has not agreed to release Dr. Ramdin from doctor-patient confidentiality to discuss Nandi's case with carte blanche. But he claims we are trying to attribute blame for a pre-existing condition, and he cannot respond as the matter is before the HPCSA. Last year, Laura laid a formal complaint with the HPCSA about Dr. Ramdin's treatment of Nandi. With Nandi's case, we are looking at a possible invoking of our suspension regulations. Cases of negligence, where we realize that there is risk to patients, we invoke our suspension regulations. This is the Colleges of Medicine of South Africa, the custodian of the quality of medical care in our country. To practice as a specialist gynecologist, you have to pass the exams and become a fellow of the College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or FCOG. According to the Kailicha Medical Center's website, Dr. Ramdin became a fellow of the college in 1995, but they have no record of him. The website also falsely claims he's been a member of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists since 2004. When asked to explain, Dr. Ramdin denied that he had ever made these assertions. Our ethical rule number 27, that is really misrepresentation and it, it just shows lack of integrity. In August last year, Beauty Mama was diagnosed with a suspected ovarian cyst at Port Elizabeth's Doranginza Hospital. When no specialist was available to remove it, her 19-year-old daughter Zainab went online to find a gynecologist. So I got a hold of this uh, Dr. Anil Ramdin, and when I was reading his website, like anyone would, 
you would say, wow, this is an amazing doctor because of all the things that he claims to have achieved. And I told him my mom needs laparoscopic surgery. He's like, oh, okay, no, it's fine. I can, I can assist you with that. So I asked him, how much would it be for the, for the surgery, like for the whole procedure? He's like, um, just give me 50,000 and, and everything can be sorted for your mama. But they didn't have 50,000, so they sold their house in Port Elizabeth. On the 21st of August, they consulted Dr. Ramdin at the Ronda Bosch Medical Center. He did an ultrasound. He's like, no, mama, no, uh, because you know the initial report said that the cyst is around 20 centimeters. So he was like, no, mama, no, you need to get surgery quick, quick, because now this thing is around 40 to 50 centimeters now. Their attorney deposited 50,000 into Dr. Ramdin's account, and the next day, they caught a cab to the operating theater in Kailicha. He actually told me on that day that um, since the, the mass is so huge, um, a laparoscopic wouldn't be, you know, good enough. What needed to be done was a open surgery. Zainab watched her mother being wheeled into theatre for a midline laparotomy. Forty minutes later, Dr. Ramdin came out and spoke to her. We did the surgery on your mom, but it, it doesn't look good. And I asked him, what do you mean it doesn't look good? And he said that, um, you know, like, it's better you, you, you see for yourself. He then took her from the ward into the operating theater. My mom is just laying on the bed, like on my left hand side. She's laying there and she's still. She's, she's still open. She was still open and um, he showed me this big bowl. He's like, um, This is what we took out of your mom. And he's like, um, it doesn't look good. Um, I have to tell you that your, your mom has cancer and by the looks of it, it's uh, already stage four. And he said, all you have to do right now is just give your mother all the love and care because she's going to die soon. And he then said that I had to tell my mom the news. Three hours after the surgery, he discharged Beauty Mama. Within days, her condition had worsened, so they sought help at Grotesgeer Hospital, but they required a referral letter, so Zainab called Dr. Ramdin. And he said, if you want a referral letter, go to Kailicha. And I told him, but Kailicha is too far for us to go there, and we, we don't have our own car. He's like, then I don't know what you're going to do. Now stop bothering me. And then he dropped the call. A private GP finally referred Beauty to New Somerset Hospital, where a gynae oncologist told Zainab that Dr. Ramdin had botched the surgery. I honestly felt like dying, because... Because now my mom is in that situation because of a doctor I contacted. Beauty returned to Port Elizabeth, but spent her last weeks in hospital almost unable to recognize her daughter. Mama? Mama? She passed away less than a month after the surgery at the age of 46. The case of Beauty Mama has been reported to the HPCSA. Once again, a cancer patient was allegedly subjected to unnecessary surgery, and this time her daughter exposed to unacceptable trauma. Dr. Ramdin wouldn't answer any questions as he's bound by doctor-patient confidentiality. When Zainab granted him permission, he didn't respond. Sassock's experts believe his treatment of both patients probably represents unprofessional conduct and practicing outside his scope of practice. I'd like to see him locked up for a very long time because right now, right here, as I'm with you talking to you, I don't have my mom. He needs to stop this before it's too late. Two weeks after our interview, Nandi passed away in hospital with her sister and Lara by her side. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.